Nina, you're going to be talking about modern fiction in the American West. I know I didn't use the right buzzwords <laughs> here. T tell me what you're talking about. I'm going to be talking about what I like to call post-frontier fiction, fiction that sort of moves beyond the traditional narratives that I think people know about the American West. Because I think when people think about the West, they think about you know Owen Wister or Zane Grey or Louis L'Amour, and there are definitely an there's an idea of the Western, and there are a lot of writers like Annie Proust subverts it with Brokeback Mountain, and there are lots of people writing the story of the American West in, in writing it in a way that is not the sort of traditional cowboy hero narrative, um, and also talking about the land in ways that are also, I think, separating a little bit from the sort of romanticizing of ranching and, and cowboys. Sort of looking beyond this past that we've created for ourselves in the traditional Western, yeah. whether it's a movie or a book, mm -hmm. and thinking more about the people who really live here. Yeah, because I mean, I think it's strange that there haven't been more books about you know, oil and gas or coal or, um, it's there, I guess for myself, I write, I write, so I'm interested in telling the story about race in the American West. And that is not something that people even, I mean, when I say I'm from Wyoming, people are like, no, no, wait, there aren't brown people in Wyoming. So talking about the stories that people are writing that are not sort of what we think of as mainstream or it's not even mainstream because I think we do, we do live here, but it's, I think people, have an idea of who lives in Wyoming or Colorado mm -hmm. or um, you know Montana or Idaho. When you teach uh, your students, how do they react to reading some of this material? They're pretty familiar with the place, so mm -hmm. I love it when they read. I love it because they're like f massive fact checkers. They're, we just read an essay about rodeo by Gretel Ehrlich, and a lot of them, which is she's you know Salsa Open Spaces is sort of the tr it's a beautiful book. It's very um, sort of sets the tone of, of a lot of Western mm -hmm. essays. And they took a lot of issue with certain things about rodeo. They said, oh, she's romanticizing it. I didn't grow up doing rodeo. It didn't, wasn't like this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's fun to have ranch kids in my class and kids that are like, even when they read Annie Prue, think, well, that's not how our ranch was run, you know? <laughs> and they, they are great fact checkers, and I like that. Um, and it's interesting to talk to them about what we conceive of this notion of the West. What is it? What does the interior West, the American West, what does that mean? And you know, there's no right answer, but I think, I think reading literature and stories that is that make the sort of canon of this place more diverse is, is just beneficial for everyone, especially in the times we're living in. <laughs> One of the things that I've found as a professor at UW is that there's a broad variety of students in my classes, mm -hmm. uh, and you have a stereotype of what the typical student is, mm -hmm. and the next thing you know, there are five people in your class that <laughs> whatever that stereotype yeah. was, don't fit it. Right. Uh, whether it's an age difference mm -hmm. or a religious difference or, or a uh, racial difference or whatever it is. Um, and so when you're done with your course, mm -hmm. do your students have a concept of Western literature? I think I give them that concept because I we're, weirdly, I don't think a lot of my students think of the literature or where we live in the United States is that important, which is because, you know, we're the lowest electoral college. Like, we're just told again and again, like, we, not that we don't matter, but we're kind of, our population's low, we, we don't count as much. And I think they're kind of fascinated to know, like, no, we have a sort of um, a literature of this place, and we have a sort of identity of this place. And, I mean, even if, even though I'm brown and grew up in Casper, I have a very, I, I, we have a similar identity of someone who grew up in mm -hmm. Cheyenne and you, whose parents worked in the Air Force Base because we grew up in Wyoming and I think that does shape our identity. And I like of them thinking of this place as important. The class is a hybrid, the way I teach it here is a hybrid creative writing class. So they write their own Western yeah. stories and narratives okay. in the class. And um, it's really interesting to see what they pick to write about, like what little niche of what world they're an expert in in Wyoming that they will tell me about. Um, this semester I have two students actually from Jackson and you know their experience of Wyoming is completely different. I mean they they grew up with a lot of tourists, they grew up with a much more transient population, a much more affluent population. So the stories they're writing are very different than my Casper <laughs> stories which have nothing to do with that. So it's been really interesting to see how they all write about the state or write about some of the, I, I allow Colorado too. <laughs> I allow it. Well, Nina, uh, I'm looking very much forward to hearing your talk I in am. a couple of weeks. Thanks. Thank you. 
Go back to college for a day, minus the test, stress, and homework. Join us for three lectures delivered by top-notch professors who will enlighten and entertain you. This event will be held at the National Wildlife Museum. Doors open at 8.30 a.m., so join us for complimentary coffee and donuts before the event. As always, this event is free. See you at the next Saturday U.